Hello, good people uh, interested in Postgres and monitoring it. I'm Karel uh, from Cybertech again and um, continuing our little mini series on our Postgres monitoring tool called PGWatch2 on the occasion of it uh, approaching um, 1000 stars on GitHub. Um, so in the previous episode, we talked about the general architecture, general idea, what is it, why you would want to use it maybe. And today we go into more depths uh, with, 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 with a sample Docker setup. So, uh, which is probably the most common way how people run Pitch Watch 2. Um, so about uh, the deployment models a bit. So. Uh, with Docker, mostly you're going to be using the pull model, I guess. So, so meaning um, all the needed components um, uh, are in the container. So we provide those ready-made containers where you basically just need to launch it and in insert the connect strings to your databases and, and the image will take care of everything. But you can also actually use the pull mode if you want. So for example, in some kind of sidecar configuration, or something like that with those Docker images. Um, and we provide quite some many images also. So we want to actually unify some of those. There are too many. Um, uh, this is the original image uh, with, with the InfluxDB storage. And this might be the most popular one still. But we actually do not recommend it anymore if you're starting out fresh. So better to use uh, a Postgres backed image, meaning we use uh, Postgres for metric storage. So um, this this works better for for like a small and medium sized setups um, uh, because you will benefit uh, from from the powerful SQL query language, and we provide more dashboards out of the box uh, for Postgres storage. Uh, but there are also like the single components, like the collector only image, the, some, some image for OpenShift, uh, use, so, so using like another root, but some unprivileged user. And there are there is uh, this, this um, uh, image specifically for, for uh, rolling out the uh, PGWatch2 config TB or the metrics TB schema. And there's also one actually for the admin uh, UI, but I wouldn't recommend to really use it. Uh, um, so this is how you would launch an image. So something uh, similar we showed already in the previous um, video also. And uh, for, for more per permanent setups, definitely, you know, we, we, we recommend to use a version number here um, so that you know what you're really running when you're running to issues also, for example. And about those exposed services, so there is a, that, here's the list of services. Um, um, mostly you just want Grafana or maybe also like additionally the, the admin UI to insert those, those monitor databases um, and maybe also the statistics port. So the Postgres port is um, just, you know, maybe for, for backups or if you, want, yeah, if you want to back up your configuration. Um, and basically you're all done after you launch this command. So I have it here also ready. So I'm going to just press enter. Uh, boom. And yeah, let's check the Docker logs. Uh, did you watch two? So yeah, it's doing something. Yeah. Good. Um, but this was not actually really the recommended way to launch it also for long-term setups. So, so uh, you would actually want to use some volumes um, separately for, for uh, Postgres data, for Grafana data, and for PGWatch2 internal configurations. And why? Uh, just to make it easier uh, to update the image. So at some point we will, you know, fix something and, and then we will release like a newer version. So then you can just uh, stop the old container and uh, swap out the number and, and launch, it, launch, it, uh, launch it with the same volumes. And you can retain the metric data and the configuration data without any backups and uh, then importing those backups. So definitely recommended. And uh, those paths here, you should actually know it's documented also, but uh, you can look into the Docker file for that directly also. So there's the Docker file and down there, 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 there are the volume definitions. So, uh, 
So this is the recommended way. And now we're ready to actually start monitoring some uh, business databases. Um, and for that, we first need a monitoring user, of course. So, so it's usually called PGWatch2 uh, because of the, uh, the default scripts that we provide all, all kind of assume it. So would make would be a good idea just to you know keep using this user. And basically, uh, you would already be, be gathering quite some many metrics uh, without any special uh, extra moves. But uh, for Postgres versions uh, 10 and upwards, actually, it is recommended to, to make this user also or to grant it like a system role named PG Monitor. That's exactly meant for this uh, monitoring uh, purpose. So, so that, that this, our monitoring user has more access to the metrics. Um, you wouldn't usually want to use a super user, yeah? only when you're uh, using uh, like a um, PG watch in, in a push configuration. So meaning that the, the agent is really running on the database server and, and there is no like a security concerns, but you know, remotely connecting uh, as a super user is mostly not recommended. So there, there are workarounds for that. So you don't need that actually. We provide some helper, the security definer functions and it's all documented. So, and yeah, for maybe for some super important databases also, you might want to set some connection limits to PG watch. Uh, so, uh, this is per database. Actually, PGWatch tries to open uh, two, uh, will we'll open mag in uh, maximally two connections in parallel. Uh, so, so if you've got like uh, only one database, then this three would be, would be enough. Um, and and uh, almost always you would also want to have this, uh, the most popular Postgres um, extension uh, installed or enabled uh, PG start statement. So this will, this will make troubleshooting uh, much easier. So basically we can see which queries are burning our server time. And yes, yeah, so then we can head to our uh, small admin UI and, and just ins insert the connect strings. And um, then comes the PG Watch 2 specific part of, of specifying the monitoring configuration, actually, yeah, which metrics we want to monitor and how frequently. And to make it even easier, we've actually compiled like a quite a big set of um, preset configs uh, that basically say, okay, do we want to monitor a little or, or really uh, basically everything? And, and uh, you just you know, choose one config there. And, and uh, yeah, so let's go to the, our uh, installation, localhost uh, uh, 8080. And yes, yeah, so, so you just, you, you need to select something from here. And, and the definitions, what does it mean actually, uh, are available on this tab, metric definition page. Uh, so, and you can, of course, change those presets. Um, yeah, here, another highlight of, of how to actually change those monitoring intervals. And uh, this can be actually also floating point numbers. So you can, you know, if you want to be really aggressive, you can try like, like a half a second or so with some metrics uh, that do not multiply data, for example. Um, and then talking about further configuration, uh, there are a lot of actually options. So if you look at the full list here of the environment variables that the Docker, uh, you can feed into Docker, you know, it's, I think it's like 40, 50 items here, but the most common ones maybe, maybe are listed here. And basically it's, it's about, you know, some more extra debug output. It's about retention. Uh, by default, PG Watch uh, is of course quite conservative. So we, we store data for two weeks uh, in case of Postgres storage and a month in case of InfluxDB storage because it has better uh, compression. So, so we can store a bit more. And then, yeah, we can, we can enable built-in uh, uh, this, this uh, self-signed certificates for Grafana, for example, some login users, uh, uh, default user, by the way, for Grafana is uh, the user is called admin 
and the password is pgwatch2 admin no spaces so you then you can change also stuff and um, yeah then there are some performance crutches like patching delays and and password uh, encryption so uh, the thing is yeah that by default the passwords that you enter here are uh, stored in plain text in the configuration database so if you don't like that you you should encrypt them but then again uh, you you know you 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 can't just look at the password if you for, forget uh, about those. Um, you can you can though store the key. So the key is generated uh, on the first run of the container. So it, it's somewhere in the pgwatch 2 folder inside the image. Um, so and talking about more options. So uh, here I, I'd like to remind you that pgwatch 2 is designed to be like a loosely uh, designed uh, for following the like a loosely coupled principle so basically you don't need to run all those images so so or all those components inside the, the docker so so where did we have this picture here so yeah basically the only mandatory part is this this collector and and uh, you can reuse existing uh, a Postgres servers, for example, here we have an example. So how to, you know, how to use an existing server. Uh, given here that it's already been bootstrap also with the metric schema. So there was an image for that also, or you can just, you know, follow the manual and, and directly execute some SQL files. And, and here, for example, like a Docker Compose example, uh, how, to, how to do loosely coupling. Uh, so, about security so what does uh, pgwatch2 provide basically all common sense security is there so so meaning transport connection uh, between the, the all the components the config db the metrics db the actual databases that we're monitoring so this is uh, configurable though if i mean you, you have the option so to to really want transport level security or not on, on and on what level we even uh, support certificates so um then those you can you know uh, launch the containers right away with some some D, with some other users with your own custom passwords uh, uh, also with the transport level security for grafana for the web ui uh, you can disable some some logs in the web ui uh, this this uh, con uh, this password encryption and yeah for in influx you also can you know explicitly allow self-signed certificates. Uh, so then the last chapter I think for today is troubleshooting. So not always everything you know works straight out of the box. So um, then you've got some options uh, what to look at. So of course the Docker logs command um, Im immediately after start when you see something weird. So, uh, but this, this uh, actually won't help you uh, down the line. So it's only basically for the bootstrap moment because the component logs are redirected into files inside the image. So, so yeah, so here at some point you won't get any new stuff. So, so then you would have to use this, uh, the, the logs uh, section here, uh, or, or, uh, or you, you, you can also, you know, execute into the container and, and look, look at those, uh, supervisor D logs. Uh, then there was this um, uh, collector has a status port, so it basically spits out some some JSON and and uh, yeah, you, it has some counters for for how many successful metric fetches were there and, and how many failures. So you can maybe hook it up to with some other monitoring systems. Um, so yeah, it's like a call as a local host. So it looks something like that. So, you know, are, are, is everything good with the state of storage? Uh, what's the average, you know, the writing time for those metrics and and, uh, and the uptime? So, and how many databases are we actually monitoring? Um, and yeah, then that's the last option, you know, 
going into the really container and, and maybe restarting some components or looking at the internal logs or, or but this you know this is something that you normally you, you should not uh been, been it shouldn't be needed yeah um so that was it i think for today so yeah again in case you run into problems or have some some nice feature ideas, uh, definitely let us know. The, the this tool is by far uh, not ready, and uh, see you in another episode. Bye bye.